everyone, my name is Master Rothmus, and I'm joined today by Brent Disbro, campaign lead at Relic Entertainment. Alright, okay, and what do you do, uh, Brent Disbro? Uh, on a day to day basis, I'm working with uh, an awesome team of designers, artists, programmers, uh, all, all the roles uh, to bring the best uh, single player campaign that we can build for Dawn of War 3. Alright, now for Dawn of War 3, I remember back for you know, Dawn of War 1, Vanilla, and stuff like that, there were multiple different campaigns, especially the Dark Crusades and Actually, not Dark Crusade. Yeah, that. Dark yeah. Crusade. So, uh, especially with Dark Crusade, Soulstorm, all the like, will we see multiple different campaigns for Dawn of War Three? Well, right now we're focusing on our on our basically our launch campaign, right? So, uh, for Dawn of War Three, we've got three factions: uh, the Orcs, the Eldar, and the Space Marines. Uh, what we're doing with them is we're telling a, a narrative, an interweaving narrative that goes through the perspectives of a hero of each race. So, Gabriel Angelos, Chapter Master of the Space Marines. He's the perspective from the Space Marine side. And there's a similar hero character for the Orcs and the Eldar. And we're doing a campaign where you play one mission as the Space Marines, next mission as the Orcs, next mi mission as the Eldar. And we're sort of looking at the narrative thread, but from these different perspectives. And so what was good for Gabriel Angelos in the first mission might not be so good for the Orcs that follow. And so we want to have things where there's we set up something in one mission that's followed up in the next. Now, um, when let's say for example I lose a mission for the orc, or I win a mission for space marines, or all that stuff, um, will that impact the next mission, sort of a I guess difficulty level or something like that? We're doing a sort of a very strong campaign focus, so it's you complete the mission, then you continue on with the campaign. Oh, okay. So there's nothing like let's say I do this decision instead of that decision, and that could impact the ending. There's nothing like that here. No, it's not like a not like an RPG where we have multiple endings. Okay, fair enough. Um, so what are you guys hoping to bring to the multiplayer scene? Obviously, you're bringing in base building. Now, there's a new mechanic you guys also introduced where you bring along three elite units. Um, I like to um, understand. I, I sort of understand it, but i like to, uh, for you to explain it a little bit more. Sure. Uh, so there's three elite slots that you can uh, choose the elites that you want to bring into a, a mission or into a multiplayer match. Each elite has its own sort of role on the battlefield. Uh, you saw the demo with uh, Lady Solaria piloting, piloting an Imperial Knight, for example. That's a late game uh, elite. A lot of resources to get her on the field of battle, but once she's there, huge impact. But the cost it takes to get her onto the field of battle, that's something that you can't spend until she's arrived. So you have to survive long enough, whereas somebody else might field Gabriel Angelos, for example, much earlier in the, in the battle and maybe beat you before you have a chance to even get to Lady Celia. So there's that sort of uh, interplay between how much that elite costs and when you bring him, onto the, bring him onto the field of battle. So those three slots allow you to create an elite force that can tailor to a variety of situations. You may be a total early game uh, kind of player. So you might have three low cost elites and get them on the field of battle really quickly. But later in the game, if the opponent, for example, has been holding out and they want to do Slayer, mm -hmm. those three the elite units might not do so well against that one super elite. Alright, now, but you guys have also introduced sort of a system in the player where you get to pick and choose various um, units that could uh, essentially be banned, like a Dota 2 system. Or at least that's how I interpreted it from the uh, PC Gamer article that you guys did a while back in which you guys beforehand, before the game even starts up, you can choose your own uh, units and stuff like that, or elite units, or is that like some sort of, or is that just like a confusion I've made? I think it might be a, a misunderstanding. A misunderstanding? Yeah. Okay. yeah, I mean, we have the base building, so as a player, you can choose which line units you're going to build on the battle, field of battle by which buildings you make. Okay. Uh, so that, that'll definitely choose, uh, affect the composition of your line units and that army. And then the elites are the second big choice in oh. there. But yeah, we don't have anything where you ban people necessarily. Okay, all right. So the three elite units, right? How are you going to acquire them? Are the three different types that you can field onto about? Can you acquire more than those three types, or um, within the, within a, a, a given battle or yeah, mission? A given, a given, no, no, just a given multiplayer match. That's um, those three that you pick are the ones that you take them into the match. Oh, okay. Yeah. So let's say, uh, for example, there are twelve or twenty different elite units that you can pick. For the space marines, right? Mm -hmm. Just a, a ball, uh, a ball instrument, right? So, with that being said, I can only choose three of those twenty. So yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So that's part of the choice as a player. Is it's like, you know, and that that'll inform your gameplay style, mm -hmm. right? So, if you want to play a very aggressive game, you can choose this mixture of elites. If you want to play a range game 
and use your line units to keep that separation between the enemy and your ranged units, keep them safe, that's a game you can play. So we want to make sure that each faction has an uh, overall gameplay style, and then within that, your choice of elites and the choice of line units that you build in the battle will, affect, will sort of determine your success. Okay. Um, now, how are you going to acquire new elites as time goes on? Will they be given to all players so they can choose uh, regardless, or will they have to be earned through like some sort of like um, level up system, in-game currency, that sort of shit? We're not talking about that stuff yet. That's some of the information that we're, we're going to be kind of releasing later in the year. Okay. But uh, yeah, I think we have a I, I think we have a good plan there that people will be happy with. Okay, fair enough. Now, um, obviously, there's been a lot of backlash on the. Uh, graphic fidelity of the game and stuff like that, like mm -hmm. details and stuff. Now, I I want to kind of understand your thought process behind um, some of the choices that you've made regarding the graphics and animations and all that stuff. Is this just free alpha footage? Um, what's going to change? What is going to definitely be improved on? No, I mean we're really happy with the the art that we've got, um, and we and we've made a very conscious decision in terms of achieving that art target. You know, the biggest thing is one of the biggest targets we had was large-scale spectacular battles and in order to do that we need to have an extreme amount of clarity for the players so they can understand what units are doing what where and when uh, and in order to do that sometimes you know to make a, a picture clear you have to pull elements out and so what we did with that uh, with our art design process was looked at it and sort of said okay well what are the things that help focus the players attention best so that is the visual effects that is the colors that's the uh, that's the art style on, on the units. That's the size of the units. So all of those things together are communicating towards this goal of a very clear, awesome gameplay battle. That you know when you see it in motion, when you're playing it, it's it's something else. Yeah, we're really happy with. Yeah, it. definitely when the game's in motion, sh shit goes crazy really yeah. fast. And I do enjoy the the particle effects and all that other stuff. Going back to elites, however, I, I did kind of bring up a question just now. Um, can you field multiple um, units of one type? So for example, if I pick the Assault Terminator um, Elite unit, right, and I build more Assault Terminators, maybe Solaria, can I build more of her or more of her type? No, with the Elites, they're very singular. Now, you know, that's not to say that in the future we might have variants of those characters, you know, as an Elite, so you might, you know, hypothetically, you know, maybe we have three Imperial Knights, different variants, and. Yes, you could attempt to bring them all to the field of battle, but you're probably going to lose really badly because <laughs> you know, you're going to have to wait a long time to get all those out on the field. I understand. Yeah. Uh, are you guys going to have end game weapons into the game? I did see an orbital um, sort of um, bombardment ability. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, are you guys going to add in more uh, epic uh, abilities and stuff like that? Like, uh, um, I do play a lot of Ultimate Apocalypse mod, so there are buildings that can basically wipe out an enemy base. Will you have. I guess buildings that can create, I don't know, um, the, the effect that you can have from a normal bombardment, but on the scale of an enemy base. Uh, in, in what we've done with pretty much all of the mechanics of the game is we focused on counterplay as, as a key element of it. So with the super ability, like the orbital bombardment, that's the Space Marine super ability, right? And it, and it kicks ass, right? And I don't know if they mentioned in the demo, but the player can control where that beam yeah, goes, yeah, they right? Did. But, but there's counterplay for that, right? Buildings. They're not going to be able to do much against it, you know, because they can't run away. <laughs> but, but at the, at the at the unit level, there is the option of running things, away, running uh, running away uh, from some. Actually, that's not true. Some uh, armies have w different ways they can deal with their buildings to deal with something like that. But uh, we'll be talking about that more in the okay, future. Okay, fair yeah. enough. But yeah. all factions will have some sort of like quote unquote end game ability. Yeah, they'll, they'll all have a super ability. Okay. Right? okay. Yeah, they all have faction mechanics like. The Space Marines one, that's the death from above. The you know, the user, the player populated drop pods, which is uh, an awesome way of turning battles around. Yeah, I wanted to ask that. So um, what are the different mechanics that we see from each faction? Um, I'm assuming that the Eldar would be using a lot of webway technology in order to try and bring their units fast onto the battlefield. Now Space Marines have drop pods, and I'm guessing you can customize those before the match or uh, during a match or something like what that. What do you mean, like the, in, the, the contents of the drop pods? Yes, yes. You can do that throughout the match. Okay. So that's, that's a key thing. And so in the campaign, in multiplayer, you choose what units are going to go into the drop pods and then when they get used and you can use them multiple times throughout the course of the battle okay um now what are these can you talk about the mechanics of the other two fa uh, factions not yet but 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 i think you know you can look at the space marines and say okay that's a great example of what the space marines are doing we're going to try and do equivalent cool things 
for the other factions. And, and we're going to release more of that information over the next year. Okay, fair enough. Now, what sort of game modes or battles can we expect from the multiplayer scene? Will we be expecting something akin to that of Dawn of War 1 with the control point modes? Will we be expecting sort of classic RTS where we'll be seeing like all three? Like, whereas we'll have control points from Dawn of War 1, uh, control points from Dawn of War 2, and possibly even a mode for just classic RTS players? We're, uh, we've got a, we've got some really exciting ideas for multiplayer that uh, I apologize we're not talking about. That's all yet. fine. That's yeah. fine. But I think I think people are gonna be really happy with what we're, we're building. Okay, I'm I'm really excited to see this yeah, game. Yeah, I can tell. It's thank, awesome. Thank you uh, so much. Thank um, you very much. I do have to ask, however. Yeah. Will for a final question, will there be army customization? Meaning, can I change the variants of certain weapons? Can I also color my guys? I, all I can confirm right now is that we have army painting for sure. Okay, because I would really love to upload custom images for my banners, my badges. So if I can put like maybe, I don't know, some custom uh, army skin, maybe Shrek face on the orc, you know, that sort of stuff. But thank you we for your time. We can't talk about that, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. You know what's going to happen, right? I know what's going to happen. You know what kind of things people are going to update. Oh, actually, I just want to ask, are you guys allowing modding in this game? It's something that we're really excited about. We're not talking about it yet, but yes, we're, it's absolutely one of the things People have done it a lot in our past, right? Obviously, the ultimate mod stuff. So yeah, absolutely something we're examining right now. Okay, thank you so much. Hey, thank you. Thank you. That's awesome.